Hello and welcome everyone for another month's webinar. We are glad to have you here. And today we are going to talk about workflow automation and process control. But before we do that, let me introduce myself. I am Adrian Auger, technical sales manager with the international team at Mounts. And I've been with uh, in the industry for more than 10 years now. So I had the opportunity to meet uh, several customers and help them face the challenges that they have on the assembly lines. So this gave me some good solid background that we are using nowadays to keep on helping and supporting our customers through their assembly processes. So for those of you who don't know us yet, Mounts is a family-owned company that was created in 1965. And since then, we developed and our headquarters are still located in San Jose, California in the Silicon Valley. Our distribution and warehouse facility is located in Foley, Alabama. And we now have our international sales and service center just out of London in the UK. As a company, we've always been 100% focused on talk. So we manufacture and promote tools that apply torque, but we also do that for tools that measure torque. And as such, we were the first company to develop an electronic torque analyzer in 1973 for an international defense company. Our customers operate many different fields, defense, aerospace, automotive, electronics, medical, being among the most uh, relevant ones. So let's go back to our subject of the day, which is optimization of the process and automation of the process through battery tools. So basically, optimization comes down to one keyword and it's control. The aim here is to have a complete control over the assembly process from A to Z. So to gain this control, what is important is to be able to take into, consider, into consideration the different variables that enter into play when we are making an assembly process. And as we will see, these variables are quite numerous uh, and we will have to use some of the features provided by the tool to keep control of that. The aim in the end is of course to help the end users to improve the productivity, improve the quality, and obviously reduce the costs. So one important key here when we talk about process control, assembly control, is to have the possibility to error proof the system. And to error proof the system, we of course have to first identify what are the most common error happening during a fastening. I would start by talking about under and over tightening here, which are occurring on a daily basis on many production lines around the world. And under tightening obviously will result in the part wobbling and being loose. This is generally speaking, something that will be easy to identify and easy to take uh, corrective actions for directly on the spot. Over tightening can itself be a bit trickier to identify because the part may look like it's properly assembled when it leaves the workstation, when it leaves the factory. But if the fastener is tightened too strongly with too much torque, there is too much tension in the end in the assembly itself. And in case of heat or shock on the part, this can result 
in the fastener breaking and obviously the part deassembling and having a quality issue. This obviously, as you can understand, can be quite serious as the part will be in this case out of the factory with possibly the end user. So this will have more implication in terms of rework for cost, but also for the image of the company. Another fastening error that we commonly see is cross threading. So this can be due to the fact that the screw is not properly inserted into the thread during the rundown or some issues uh, due to the thread. So this with most of the common electrical tools uh, will be difficult to identify because we can possibly reach the target torque. So the tool may declare that the fastening was okay, even though the fastening in the end is not okay. Another issue is going to be the fact that fasteners are not always run all the way down. So this can be the case through uh, for setting applications or if the wrong fastener is used for the wrong application. So in this case, we may still run the tar achieve the target torque, but again, the fastener is not all the way down clamping the parts, then we have a quality issue. So the battery tools, as we, will, as we will see throughout this webinar, will have different features that will help identify these errors and take the corrective actions right on the spot, but also further down the line. And this obviously comes to error proofing here. And error proofing can be done through different steps and, and features. And two of the most um, used one are going to be the torque tolerance and the angle window. So to, me, to make it a bit clearer here, we have a fastening graph. So in blue, we have the torque, it's a threaded hole. And in orange, we have the angle during the round down. As you can see, after the tool achieve the rundown through the thread, the screw starts to sit and the tool will slow down uh, to achieve the target torque. So that's why we see that the angle evolves less fast during the final rundown and the final step of the fastening. So on this graph here, we have a target torque of roughly 4.8 Newton meters. And what we can do with the battery tool that we are talking about today is set a torque tolerance around this target torque so that we know that the torque is going to be achieved as an example at 4.8 Newton meters plus or minus 10%. In this case, if the tool achieves a torque that is out of this 10% tolerance, the fastening will be declared not good and an error signal will appear on the tool and on the controller. But the same goes for the angle. And here the angle is going to be very helpful for identifying many mistakes that may be happening during the rundown. We can see here on the graph that 4.8 Newton meters was reached at 720 degrees. We can do several rundowns uh, for good fastening and take the average angle. And for this example sake, let's keep it at 720 to 20 degrees is the average angle needed to reach our correct fastening. So in this case, we could set a minimum angle at 680 degrees and a maximum angle at 760 degrees. So that means that to be declared okay, we need to reach 4.8 Newton meters between 680 degrees and 760 degrees. So what happens 
if we reach the target torque before this 680 degrees. So in this case, the tool will send an error signal. And this is linked to some issues that we talked about earlier. This can be a cross thread. This can be due to the wrong fastener being used. This can be linked to several other issues during the rundown. So if 4.8 Newton meter is reached before 680 degrees, we will have an error signal. On the other hand, if the tool reaches the maximum angle of 760 degrees, we will also send a signal, uh, an error signal. And in this case, the tool will stop to protect the parts and send this error signal. This can be again linked to the wrong fastener used for the tightening, but this can, uh, can also be linked to some missing parts like gaskets of washers that will result in the fastener turning too long as these parts are missing. So the tools will detect those errors. And again, to sum up, to have uh, okay fastening, we need to reach 4.8 Newton meters at plus or minus 10% within the angle window. Any event happening out of this tight square and tolerances will be declared not good. So when should you consider uh, integrating an automation uh, fastening process for your workflow? Well, obviously, if you have any of the issues that we talked about just before, this is something that you may want to consider. And again, the tool will be allowing you to identify the mistakes right on the spot, take the corrective actions, but also integrate those errors into your quality management system to take longer term corrective actions to improve the production as a whole and make it smoother and leaner. But there is also another point where you can consider having these tools on the production line. And this is if you have several workstations with several uh, tools working on those workstations. And here, the flexibility of the battery tools will come in very handy for you. Indeed, each tool will have 15 different presets. And a preset is basically a target torque, torque tolerance, and angle window. So that means that we can have 15 different target torque with only one tool. And this, for you as an end user, means that you can basically replace up to 15 different assembly tools with only one tool. Obviously, this can allow you to allocate your resources differently around the production to further increase the productivity and decrease your cost for the assembly line. Obviously, as we talked about, we have error-proofing features in the tools. And as we've seen through the graphs earlier, we will ensure that the torque is properly achieved at the right place on the fastener. But the tools will also provide a complete process control to the operators. And here the aim is to guide the operators step by step during the assembly. And this is related to fastening, of course. But we can also guide the operators through other steps, display different messages to them so that we can be fully integrated in the line with the controller, but also fully integrated for uh, PLC communication, network communication. And for those of you who are tending your production to go towards the industry 4.0, this is something that is going to talk to you, fully integrated process control. Of course, as we can detect errors, 
The tools will also allow us to have a real-time monitoring of every fastening event happening on the, on the workstation. So this data, as we will see through the demo part, integrate the date and time, the target torque, the torque that was achieved, some barcode information if we want, as well as any error codes so that we can detect again these error codes right away. But we will also be able to save this fastening data through different processes. And this is going to touch at another keyword here, which is traceability. So as a summarize, the tools will provide productivity, quality, flexibility, and traceability. So if we look at the tools themselves now, as you can see, we have two main shape for the tools. We have the pistol grip tools and we have the angle head tools. The pistol grip tools will cover a range starting from 0 0.9 newton meters and will go up to 24 newton meters, while the angle head tools will go up to 50 newton meters today. Each of these tools come with two batteries. They also come, as you will see, with an integrated barcode reader by default. And something is that is important here is that the tools can work with a controller, but each of the tools also integrate a Wi-Fi communication board. So that means that the tools can also work as a standalone tool connected or disconnected to your Wi-Fi network as again, a standalone tool. Each of the tools will have different torque control features as we will, as we will see during the demo portion starting in a minute or so. And the features and control that we can have through the process will evolve depending on the type of control that you think is needed for the production. Before we start the demo portion, I want to invite you that to ask any question you have on the chat, and I will be happy to answer them towards the end of the webinar. So enough talk, and let's now have a look at the tools themselves. So we have here the display of a piece of the tool. And on this display, we have several information. We have on the top left corner, the P1 standing for preset one. We then have on the top right corner, the target torque, in this case, three Newton meters. In the middle here, we have the last achieved torque. So it's going to be easy for the operators to see the last achieved torque. In this case, uh, we will see three Newton meters um, as we achieve a fastening. Bottom left is the last achieved angle. Bottom center is the last achieved fastening time. And on the bottom right, we have a screw counting feature where in this case we have five screws to count. And as we will go through, okay, fastening, the tool will count down so that again, it's clearly visible for the operators how many screws remain to be tightened on the part. On top of the pistol grip tool, we also have LEDs. In this case, the green light means that the tool is ready to work and is operational. In case of an error, we would display those LED red to also give a visual signal to the operators. The display and the buttons LEDs are the same for the angle head tools, just located obviously slightly different than for the pistol whip. So the tools can be used as standalone tools. 
we have different possibilities to program the tool directly using the buttons here. We can navigate through the different presets from P1 to P15. And something that we can do as well is only give access to the operator to a specific number of presets. So if we would want to have the only presets available that are P1 and P5, the operators would only be able to loop between P1 and P5 and would not have access to any other presets. And when we use these tools with all the functionalities unlocked directly onto it, we can also use those buttons to change some settings, namely the target torque and the speed in the tool. So to do that, we can go to the mode here and use the F3 button to reach the torque section. And in this case, we can adjust the torque by steps of 0 0.01. We can also change by steps of 0 0.1 or also change it by step of one. So it's going to be quite straightforward to set the tool directly on the production line and use the tools as the most flexible way possible, giving the operator the full access to the tool. Of course, we can also lock those buttons to prevent the operator from accesses, accessing these menus so that when we give the tool to the operator, the tool would only behave as we expect without the operator having an influence on it. So obviously we can set the tool directly using the keys here, directly on the, the tool itself, but we can also use the software that comes with the tool. And in this case, it's a software that again is included with the tool, so no license to pay or to renew on a yearly basis, the software itself is free of charge. So here I'm connected through the USB port directly on the tool, but we could also connect to the tool via Wi-Fi um, through your network. So we will see here the 15 different presets where we have preset one with two different type of fastening strategies. We can have a torque control uh, strategy, but also an angle control strategy. So in this case, we have a target torque or a target angle. We can then set the target torque, set the torque limit as we talked about, the minimum and maximum angle. We can set the speed. So all of this for each of the presets is available directly through the software. We can build then around each of the presets through the advanced functions here. And as you will see, we have 15 advanced functions. So each of them is directly linked to the presets. So advanced one obviously would be linked to preset one, advanced two to preset two, et cetera, et cetera. In the advanced functions, we have four different submenus. We have a reverse rotation that can happen at the beginning of the fastening to allow the fastener to catch the thread, just like when we want to close a bottle of water, we would turn the cap counterclockwise before we, we lock it. Exactly the same idea here. We then have a thread tapping mode where we can handle thread cutting operations needing a torque that is higher than the target torque. We also have engaging torque detections for uh, threaded holes to have a repeatable point from which we will measure the angle. So this is going to come handy for operations where the operators start to engage a fastener by hand. 
in the hole. And then for those of you who would need torque plus angle strategies, we have the possibility to add an angle step at the end of the fastening in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction. In terms of general settings for the tool, we can also obviously change the torque unit on the tool. So here we are working in Newton meters. Something interesting as well is that we can change the direction of the fastening for each preset individually. So in this case here, for this tool, we have the P2 working in the counterclockwise direction. So all of the settings linked to this preset tool will be applicable in the counterclockwise direction. And the, fifth, the 14 other presets are going to work in the clockwise direction. We can use also multi-sequences for each of the tools. So in this case, this can be useful for subjoint applications where we can make a first rundown, compress the, tar, the part, loosen the assembly slightly, and then reach the target torque. This can be also useful for helicoil applications where we want to have the helicoil right at the surface or at a specific height, height um, repeatedly. So we can use the multi-sequences for two of them with each of the two. Network settings, this is where we will be able to set the network Wi-Fi uh, on the tool. And something that I want to highlight here is first, the real-time monitoring. So in this case, this is going to be an exact copy that to what is the tool saving when we make an assembly. And I will make a rundown here. Give me one second. Mm. Okay. I will make a rundown here. And what you can see is we have a fastening time. We have the preset. We have the target torque, converted torque, so the torque applied. And we have access to all of these features here. We have also, as a column, an error signal. So um, this error code will give us different kind of code depending on the type of error happening during the assembly. And as you will see on the right hand side, we have the barcode uh, column where we can integrate barcode values directly with each of the fastening data to keep traceability uh, for the production line. We then have the graph function. So in this case, we can have two different channels. So torque as channel one and speed or angle as a channel two. So this will create graphs that are very similar to what we've seen previously so that it can help uh, the end users to identify how the tool behaves on a specific assembly so that we can then adjust the settings for each assembly, each strategy to further improve productivity and quality. So the tools, as we see, can work as standalone tools, but they can also communicate with an EPC-10 controller. And before I tell you more about this controller, let's have a look at it physically. So the controller is uh, a touchscreen tablet, basically with a micro SD card on the right-hand side. Top left corner, we have a Ethernet port. Uh, and we then have an RS-232 port underneath the controller for network communication. We have two USB ports. One of them can be used for uh, using the access point 
bundle that is delivered with the controller. In this case, the controller will generate its own Wi-Fi network so that the tools can connect to it. And then we have an HDMI port that will allow us to mirror the display on a bigger screen. And this can be especially useful for using the tools with the job or also through standard operation mode to detect any mistake happening. But you will see what I'm talking about in a couple of minutes. Underneath the tool, other ports that are available is the IO port, so 32 input output to communicate with PLC on top of the Ethernet and RS-232 ports for network communication. So this controller is going to give access to even further um, features within the tools. And this is really going to touch to complete pro process control. As again, we will guide the operators step by step um, through the assembly. So to do that, and as a demonstration sake, we have here an electric motor that needs to be assembled. And the front part necessi necessitates four screws. But there is, there is a gasket between this front part and the motor itself. So we need to make it in two different passes as a sequence so that we can first clamp the gasket and then make the final rundown at the target torque to avoid any possible leakage in the motor. So in this case, we will have two different sequences and two different target torque, two different fastening strategies as one go. Second part of the assembly of this tool is going to be the top cover, where we also have four screws as a sequence, but this time necessitating only one pass to make it properly tightened. So let's now jump to the demo portion of how this can work. So we have here the screen of the controller. We can see on the top corner that we have we have three tools registered in the controller. We have two tools connected right now to it. And we can then start the operation. So start our job. And what we've done here is create some barcodes so to, we can replicate what could be happening on the production line. And as you see, we have different barcodes. So the first one will be linked to the part itself, which is the electric motor. And we will have a different barcode for each of the process that needs to be done for the assembly, so each of the paths. And on the right hand side, these are barcode that we will use later on during the demonstration when the tools can work simultaneously and connected to the controller. So by scanning the first barcode here, I'm going to call the job related to the assembly of the electric motor. And what it tells to the operator is to take the pistol grip battery tool. And then the tool is still locked. We cannot work until we scan the sub-assembly one barcode. And then what is displayed on the screen is the position of the first fastening. So we can go ahead and make it. So give me one second here. Fastening OK. We need to go to the second position. Fastening OK, we indicate to the operator when to, need, 
you go to the third position and the fourth position. So this will clamp the part properly and make it ready for the second part of the assembly. Oh, let me refocus the tool here. So I need to scan the second barcode here and move on. Fastening okay, 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 and okay. And then we display to the operator that we need to change tool, use the angle head tool for making the assembly of the top cover. So we still have another barcode to read. And at this stage, only the angle head tool will be able to work and the pistol tool is deactivated, locked to ensure that the operator uses the right tool for the right application. So we can go ahead and make a fastening. And now let's imagine that we have a wrong fastening. So I'm going to simulate a cross thread of the operator trying to retighten an already fastened screw. So we have this error signal here directly on the screen. We have also the LED in red on the tool. And at this time, we can allow the operator to rework this specific fastener. We can skip the step. We can reset the assembly of the top cover, or we can reset the whole job. If we skip this part and we finish the two remaining screws with proper fastening, the job will still be declared not good as one fastener was not done properly. So here I'm going to rework this specific screw and make a job okay at the end. So then we can look back and indicate to the operator, switch back to the pistol tool and so on and so on. So as you can see on the right hand side here, we have all these different steps and to program them is quite simple. I'm going to quit here. We need to log in, which is password protected obviously to prevent the operators from using and changing the menus here. Hi, Adrian. Uh, we just had a, a chat. Uh, we've had a request to see the tool actually fastening. So if you're able to incorporate that at some point as you're carrying on with the demonstration, that'd be great. Okay, I will do that. So give me one second. Let's restart in this case. And I'm going to make it like this. So I have a screw plate here to simulate. So I'm going to scan the first barcode, so the electric motor to call the job, then I'm going to scan this sub-assembly barcode. So it leads us to this part where we can make the rundowns. You can see I have a reverse rotation at the beginning of each fastening here. Fastening OK, I then scan the second barcode. And here, for this example, I have a uh, angle strategy, so a target angle. And then when we use the angle head tool here, I'm going to scan the third barcode with the tool. As you can see, if we look at the pistol tool here, it's locked and it cannot 
work. So the angle head tool itself will work. So we can then move on to the next fastener. Job okay. And we look back to, to the start of the job. As you can hear, the tools are very silent. Uh, and if you are using today uh, air tools, this would change your life on the production line. So let me close this window here. Not this one. Okay. So how to program a job? It's through the settings. So we have to enter via a password. And in the job manager here, we have this job created for today, the webinar. We can come and edit it. And as you see, we have all these messages and all these comments, one after the other. And the first one, as you remember, is to use the pistol tool. We would display this message for three seconds. And then we have here this step that will delay going further to the step number four until we scan this subassembly password uh, barcode. And until we do that, we cannot go forward. So we scan this subassembly barcode. And here we have the first fastening step, which is to clamp again the face of the electric motor. And we can change the tool here. We can use the pistol tool, the angle head tool. The name of the tool can be changed also. We can give it the name of an operator, specific workstation, specific part, anything you want. So in this case, we use the pistol tool. We can select how many screws we want to make. So four screws and which preset to use from one to 15. And if you remember the multi-sequence for subjoint and helicoil operations, we have them also available here to be an integral part of the job function. And we see here on the bottom right, the picture of the tool so we can come here. And then as you can see, we can easily switch the position where we expect the first fastening to go. We can move it directly in the screen. We can increase or decrease the radius depending on the precision needed. Same goes with the width here. We have then the RJB color code so we can attribute any color we want to each position. And obviously we can do that for each fastening position here. And if we want to add fastening position directly on the screen, we can simply add one here and again, indicate where we want it to be. We can hide the screen to have complete access to the picture so that it's going to be even easier to set up. As we finish this fastening process, we will then go through reading the second barcode and second fastening step. So all this way until we reach the end of the job. So really simple, really straightforward to set up. And this is if we want to use the tools with a job, but we can also use the tools with our job. So this is just a setting to change here with job, with our job. And in this case, the operation window will change. And what we'll see here is all the tools will be able to work simultaneously. So we have the pistol tool here, making okay fastening. We can have and I will again add this one here. Maybe make it just a bit smaller. 
if we have the angle head having an error, we will also have it on the screen here with the LED in red on the tool. So we can monitor all the tools at once directly on the screen. And this is where the HDMI port can be useful is to deport this display, but also deport the display of the job so that the operators can see what's happening and what is expected of them as a next step. But there is also this column that we can see here, which is barcode. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Well, the other way. So we have this barcode. And as we talked about previously, we have other type of barcode. And the three first barcode here are related to a specific preset. And the three last barcode are related to a specific part, specific lot. So what can be done is we scan the preset one with the battery tool. Then we have the pistol grip selecting preset one. And then we want to use this preset one for part with the barcode number one. We scan it. Oops, wrong barcode. Barcode one, and then every event happening on that tool will be linked with this barcode one. So it's going to be very easy for traceability and for seeing what's happening in real time on the tool. And again, save this fastening data linked to specific parts or lots for you to be able to retrieve information later on. And these are customers and customers all around the world use this type of feature for internal and external audit to ensure that, again, if needed in three months time or six months time, we know what happened on which part and that if there was an error, it was detected. And we can also know if everything went well. So at this stage of the presentation, I'm going to, to wrap it up and I'm going to invite you to ask any questions you want. So let's open the Q&A session here. Okay. Adrian. Yes. Uh, we have a number of questions. The first one is how many tools can be connected to the EPC controller? So the EPC controller can manage up to eight tools at the same time uh, through its Wi-Fi uh, configuration. So all those eight tools will be able to work simultaneously. And in this case, what can be done as well is uh, we have obviously the range of the Wi-Fi, and if the, wi the tool goes out of the range, we can still allow the tool to work or we can lock it. But if we allow it to work, uh, the tool will save the data as a backup, as a cache, and when reconnecting to the Wi-Fi network on the controller, we will be prompted to know if we want to backup this information or simply erase it. So eight tools, one controller. Next question is how many fastening events can be programmed within the tool? Well, as you could see, we have 15 different presets available on the tools. So I would say that we have 15 target torque, 15 uh, angle windows. And then in the job function, we can uh, set 256 jobs with 256 steps for each of the jobs and then 99 screws per step. So this gives us a very wide uh, number of application that are possible. 
Thank you. Uh, what is the life of the battery? Uh, obviously, the life of battery will depend on the application itself, depending on how demanding it is for the tool. But in a laboratory environment where we run the test, we were able to make more than 3,000 tightening with only one battery charge. Um, so this is quite, quite a lot for some applications and some production lines. And something that we need to keep in mind here is that each of the tool comes with two separate uh, batteries, high full power batteries, and the charging time for one battery from zero to 100% charge is less than an hour. So it means that you would basically never run out of battery and never run out of juice. Here, something I want to highlight as well is the fact that obviously the tools are smart and communicating with the battery. And if the tool detects that the battery level is not enough, enough to efficiently deliver the fastening that is required from the tool, we will have an error display so that uh, we protect the assembly in this way and only make sure that we always have enough power for each fastening event. I think you may have answered this question really in the answer to the last question, but how many rundowns would you be able to expect from one battery charge? Yes, yeah, so again, this is going to depend on how demanding is the assembly, but you can expect something around 3,000 rundown with uh, one battery charge. Perfect, and there's one question on the chat. Do corded tools have the same adjustment shown on the EPPC software? So the, the corded tools are, going, are working with a different type of uh, controller than and the battery tools uh, and the battery uh, the corded tools sorry will have will share 90 percent of the features with the um, battery tools where we will have a difference is in the job function where obviously with the controller of the battery tools we can connect up to eight tools to one controller for the corded tools it's one controller one tool so to to replace the job function, what we did is create a model function that will allow the candid tools to navigate through different line of commands, through different uh, presets, step-by-step -step counting, so that we have a kind of similar alternative to the job function with the candid tools. Now, if we talk about another feature of the job function on the battery tool, is the display of the part itself with the positioning. So this is something that is not available as a standalone tools, as a standalone feature for the candy tools, but we also have positioning systems that can be connected to those candy tools. And in this case, these positioning systems will display the picture of the part, will display to the operator where the next fastening is expected so that we have a complete communication between the positioning system and the candid EC ECT tools to make sure that each fastener is tightened properly in a sequence and that the part has all its fasteners properly tightened before it leaves the workstation. Great. Thanks, Adrian. That's all the questions I have. Okay. Great. Well, once again, I want to thank you everybody for joining us this morning or this afternoon, depending on your location. It's always a pleasure to have you, to have you here. You will be receiving a recording of this uh, webinar in the next few days. And if you have any further questions, feel free to contact us uh, at Mounts and in the international team. We would be very happy to help you sort out and meet the requirements that you are uh, having right now. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a nice day.